On a day like any other day, West Seattle was founded by the Denny Party on November 13, 1851. Across the peninsula, the Duwamish Indians and their chief Seattle were there to meet them. Under the Donation Land Law of 1850, they claimed the land. They decided on the name New York after the hometown of a member of the party, and the tag Alki was added later. With a few months and three log cabins into the settlement, the constant rain, lack of food, and sickness proved to be a challenge. Of the original party, Charles C. Terry stuck out the hardships to become the sole owner of New York Alki, and later dropped New York for the settlement to become its own entity of Alki. Its success dying out, Terry decided to sell to David S. Stock Maynard for Maynard's share of land in downtown Seattle. By 1880, what is now Harbor Avenue became an industrial center with a sawmill, shipping yards, and a salmon cannery. The center then shifted to the Admiral Justic in 1888. Residential neighborhoods developed such as Fauntleroy, Gatewood, Highland Park, and Arbor Heights. Alcay became a renowned summer resort for the upper class. Transportation allowed Seattle to expand and thrive. The Mosquito Fleet consisted of thousands of steamships that traveled port to port around the Puget Sound from the 1850s to the 1930s. The steamboats were able to transport everything needed to build settlements. It carried settlers, troops, farm produce, livestock, machinery, timber, and mail. The unfrequent visits by the Mosquito Fleet caused the West Seattle Land and Improvement Company to build a dock near Seacrest Marina. The ferry offered regular trips to downtown Seattle that only took eight minutes. Streetcar lines moving north to east from downtown provided opportunity for expansion. The lines helped create the neighborhoods of Capitol Hill, Queen Anne, Madrona, Madison Park, and Leshy. As the city expanded, city planners began to build parks. $4 million worth of bonds were sold between 1905 and 1912 to develop parks and boulevards. The parks included Woodland Park, Volunteer Park, Green Lake, Washington Park, Ravenna Park, Leshy Park, and Seward Park. Pioneer Square was considered the heart of the city that connected to all the neighborhoods of Seattle. It was built in 1852. All the buildings were first built with wooden frames which resulted to the Great Seattle Fire in 1889. All of Pioneer Square was burnt to the ground. The neighborhood was rebuilt by the next year over the old wooden Pioneer Square. You can still go see the remains of the previous Pioneer Square by taking the Seattle Underground Tour. The new buildings were built from brick or stone to prevent another fire from happening. The neighborhood consisted of business, business owners of small shops boutique, and boutiques. Pioneer Square branched out and expanded, which led to the construction of neighborhoods like Magnolia, Capitol Hill, Queen Anne, Madrona, West Seattle, Georgetown, Ballard, South Park, and Madison Park. During the early 1900s, Pioneer Square contained the tallest building west of the Mississippi from 1914 to 1962, named the Smith Tower. It, its height was beaten by the Space Needle during the World's Fair in 1962. The neighborhood also held the first Nordstrom, opened in 1901, one of the most successful and popular clothing stores in the country till this day. In the summer of 1897, Pioneer Square was bombarded with eager gold miners needing supply and transportation while heading toward Canada's Yukon River Valley. Hawkers and outfitters flooded the streets and sidewalks, and a stoop merchant opened a mining school. Overall, the migration dras dramatically changed the course of Seattle's and eventually West Seattle's economics. Until April of 1907, the land for what was to become the West Seattle Junction was still undeveloped. But as transportation expanded, two streetcars from California Avenue Southwest to Ninth Street, now Alaska Street, put the commercial center on the map. With only a month in, several real estate agencies set up shop to sell land to new arrivals. The lot sold at a legendary pace. By 1910, the junction had replaced the Admiral District as the center of business in West Seattle. In 1911, there were at least three grocery stores, two fuel outlets, two lumber companies, three physicians, a hardware store, and two electrical firms. To this day, it remains the center of West Seattle. In 1907, the same year that Luna Park opened, the Pike Place Market also opened. Before the market opened, the system used to buy produce was difficult and expensive for both the customers and the people selling the produce. Thomas P. Ravel bought, brought the issues up to the city council and asked to open a public market. The council granted, granted permission to open the markets. There were buildings built specifically for the market, for example, the main arcade. The market dramatically expanded in 1911 and the stalls were doubled. Later that same year, the market created full-time jobs to run the stands instead of having people coming from the farms to run them. 
As years passed, the market expanded both in the amount of people that toured every day and the size itself. With the new space, the market was able to add multiple new bakeries, ice cream shops, restaurants, and other retail stores by 1916. In 1917, when World War I hit, more and more women began to work the stalls while their husbands were off at war, and still more women worked in the markets than men do till this day. The Pike Place market continued to boom throughout the 1920s and has been very successful ever since. This, there was a time period during the 1960s where people wanted to close the market and start a hotel called the Pike Place Plaza, apartments, parking garages, and the hockey arena but the plan never fell through. The Pike Place Market holds the first Starbucks to ever open in 1971 and it is still open to this day. In 1907, a 12-acre amusement park named Luna Park opened. It was named Luna Park after Coney Island's Luna Park. The park was headed by Charles I.D. Love who brought a carousel from Coney Island to Luna Park which became the most popular attraction in the park. The park was built on the northern tip of Alki Point on Pillings with a view of Puget Sound in downtown Seattle. It was considered the greatest amusement park of the West Coast. It contained multiple rides, carnival games, concession stands, and presented shows like plays or concerts. There were flaws to the park though. Many people got injured there. For example, one patron fell off the top of a ride and snapped his neck with, which resulted in death. There were many lawsuits against the park because of the injuries in park management. Charles I.D. Love became frustrated with the park's issues, sold his share, and moved with the carousel to California. After he left, the park reopened in 1913 with new rides and better management, but closed officially later that same year. Almost 20 years later, in 1931, the vacant park caught, fi caught on fire and burned down and was never rebuilt again. One problem West Seattle faced in its development was its isolation from downtown Seattle. Since 1924, there had only been two small, low-level bridges connecting the two areas. By the 1970s, the bridges were undergoing heavy travel due to the population increase and were no longer adequate. For many years, citizens had been pushing for the construction of a higher-level bridge. However, there were many struggles with finding support and money for the project, and after a scandal involving funding, it was put on hold. Despite this decision, the construction became necessary in 1978 when the Antonio Chavez, a freighter ship, struck the bridge, rendering it unusable. Construction for the new bridge began in 1980, and the West Seattle Bridge, along with the lower-level Spokane Street Bridge, officially opened in 1984. High Point began in the 1930s as a government housing and now serves as a mixed income neighborhood owned by the government. It is populated by Southeast Asians and East Africans. A huge step in the urbanization of downtown Seattle came with the 1962 World's Fair, also known as Century 21. In 1955, a man named Al Rochester had the idea of hosting a World's Fair in Seattle. Rochester, along with a planning team, decided to create a science-themed fair to erase interest and attract visitors. The idea took hold in 1959 when the federal government agreed to go along with the plan. After meeting with other countries in Paris, the project was set in motion. The plan was to hold the event in the Civic Auditorium and include exhibits put on by companies like Ford and Boeing, as well as other exhibits from around the world. They formed a committee of local scientists to create exhibits that could be enjoyed by all that came to see the fair. There were also plans to create new buildings as attractions for visitors. Perhaps the two most notable and significant outcomes of Century 21 were the monorail and the Space Needle. With the large crowds expected to attend, there was a need for a new transportation system. The monorail was an innovative way to incorporate a futuristic element of transportation from the hotels to the main fairgrounds. In order to attract a large audience from all over the world, the planners knew they needed a new eye-catching component that was individual to Seattle. Eddie Carson had the idea of a tower with a flying saucer restaurant on top. He brought his proposal to the construction team, who worked with architects to create the plan for the Space Needle. They began construction just a year before the fair began. Other architectural structures created for the fair were the Coliseum, now modern-day Key Arena, and the Science Pavilion, which became the Pacific Science Center. The fair opened on April 21, 1962. 
About 10 million people visited Seattle over the next six months to see the fascinating exhibits and architectural wonders created for Century 21. The 1962 World's Fair put Seattle on the map as a modern visionary city with a bright future and great minds. Fast forward over 50 years and you'll find Seattle has become one of the bigger and more alternative slash eco-friendly cities of the United States. Nordstrom is now the highest ranked department store in the country and has opened a couple hundred stores in the U.S. and Canada. Starbucks has become a very popular coffee shop with 21,366 shops around the world. Seattle not only displays its love for the latest fashion trends in coffee, but for its parks and eco-friendliness. With bike lanes, light rail, and its effective transportation system, Seattle has become one of the most innovative cities in the country.